so this is the January 20th, 2021 uh, diversity and inclusion meeting. Uh, it is the first day the United States will have a female vice president and yesterday was the last day we've never had one. So I will take a moment to recognize that and then ask uh, if you all wanted to continue the discussion about how to archive our notes before we proceeded, because I did interrupt that when I was messing with my office pieces. Yeah, I was just scrolling up to find today's notes and it takes a while note that some group groups have archived off, archived off 2020 into an older document and then with the newer document have a link to the older document. Um, I think you never know how good someone's internet is. I think it depends on the working group. So for example, um, maybe every, like in the case of risk, I wouldn't want to archive 2020 because there's a lot of substantial discussion from the latter part of the year that we would want to easily reference. Um, but I could see, say going back six months and you know, every time we reach a year, archiving the oldest six months or something like that. I mean, at least I don't know how this working group feels, but in, in the case of risk and evolution, like in January, if we archive 2020, we would lose a lot of context that, you know, even if it's just a link away, uh, you raise a valid point. No, not if it's a link away, then it's not really lost, especially if it's at the top of the page. Right, that's like, what I'm saying. Yeah. Okay. From a, uh, from a community standpoint, we had been talking about uh, archiving meeting notes uh, by the year, uh, immediately following the uh, that first metrics release. And I think that is what, uh, uh, forgive me, I think, was it Emily that was saying that? Or Amy? Amy. Amy, sorry. I, That's okay. When there's no picture, I can't see whose lips are moving. That's because I'm uh, cold. Oh, I understand that. Yeah, no, it's, it, there's no need to have a picture. Oh, and I believe I believe someone was working on a process to uh, archive them in Markdown. Hmm. But that might be farther away than Sean wants. Well, I mean, I'm not in John L. Um, and we actually was were successful, but nothing really came of it at the time. Um, I, I'm going to see if I can find that. So there, there was there was discussion on the uh, kind of the, the permanence of a Google Doc and how open they really are for archiving. Yeah, that's a genuine concern. Um, what we could do, I mean, what we could do temporarily, because I think the immediate concern is that some of these documents, this one in particular is like 50 pages long and people with um, internet constraints, like people like me who have five people in the house zooming right now, uh, it probably takes a long time to load. So, Kevin, do we, I mean, most, are all of these owned in any kind of organized way or is it a bit of a smattering? You're muted if you don't realize it, Kevin. I, I was not, uh, I was not responding because I, I don't know that I have an answer to that. Okay. So, all right. How about, as facilitator, I'm just going to make decisions. Hello. Uh, hi, Matt. Matt, is there a shared chaos folder for meeting notes or are they fairly smattered about the net? Um, like just in terms of like a the group. working, like a yeah. single folder? Right. I don't know that there's a single folder. Um, I think I built most of the meeting notes yeah. like long, long ago. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like I think I built, or Georg did. Right. Yes. And I recall them. Uh, yeah, that certainly is consistent with my. Recollection. I mean, we could we could move them. Is it easy enough to move? It is. Google Docs? It well, is. I mean, yeah, then that makes sense. It's, Maybe especially if we create. So what we were talking about was creating a new Google Doc for everything like for 2020 and below with a link to that document yeah. at the top of the current minutes, because people with slower Internet are having a hard time loading our 50 page monstrosity. Um, <laughs> okay. Yeah. No, no, no. That's no problem. And in fact, it probably makes sense that we would create some sort of like 
Google or Google, uh, like chaos account on Google. I think that's and really we important. could have like Elizabeth be an owner of it and I, you know, I think whomever. I think, I think that's a fantastic idea. Um, okay. Elizabeth is on the call. Um, Elizabeth, could I ask you to create such an account out and folder and then uh, move? I'll create what I'm going to do. I'm just going to executiveize. I'm just going to like, I'm going to facilitate aggressively here and I'm going to create a new note, a new Google Doc of the 150 pages, excuse me, um, that exists before this year. Assuming I have enough memory in my clipboard to handle that. <laughs> it's my 64 gig Xeon CPU Mac Pro is choking on this internet task. So well, that does or doesn't happen. Wow, that was a poor choice. Here, All I right. just um, copied in. I think this is what our archive of the 2019 okay. weekly um, Matt, is. Matt, can I ask you to go ahead and work with Elizabeth to create the archive in this, you know, cut this document down to size and put it someplace in a shared chaos account? Sure. Would Markdown be fine? Uh, that's a lot easier to load than a Google Doc if you're looking at a year's worth of content. Um, I think as long as you can use like Pandoc or something to convert all of the structure with some fidelity, because I think the indentations and highlights and things are material to the discussion. Yeah, and um, I, I worked with John L on that, but he did the actual um, like putting it in, like transferring it. I put the images in, which will have to be done afterward. But um, it was actually a pretty quick process. It took less than 15 minutes for a year. Um, so I'll, I'll, I'll reach, I'll, I think I'll reach out to him again and just see how he did that. Or ask okay. what he used and then um, follow up next week. Okay, so just to recap, what am I doing? Uh, you're, <laughs> I creating I'm doing. A, you're creating a Chaos Google account and fix a, everything. Sh a shared folder. <laughs> I'm putting AIs in the notes. So I'm EB, causing problems is what's EB, going on. No, these are actually excellent points and they've come up before and, and I've just decided we're gonna deal with it right now. So Elizabeth Barron is gonna create a Chaos Google account and a shared folder for uh, meeting minute archival. For all, for all working archival groups. Archival notes for all working groups. And how she goes about that, I'm not going to tell her how to do her job. Um, and then uh, AI Matt Snell uh, is going to work on converting the archive. So I might suggest we start with the Google Docs and then like a Google Doc set. And then Matt um, converts the archive to Markdown ensuring the preservation of indentation and graphic fidelity. And then every year we just create a new Google Doc for that year and yes. put, put the old stuff into that Markdown yeah. archive. Is that right? The yep. conclusion we came to is once we hit March, then we take the previous year and archive that. OK, but some 12 month window. Yeah. OK. I will say on March 1 of every calendar year, fourth to the end of time. Right. Stop at 30. Uh, I guess somebody's saying stop at 30 because something inaugurationally is happening. I don't know. It's just a, I put that there. Just Okay. Is that the case? Is that yeah. when they're inaugurating the guy? Is it? No, but just so we can like. Oh, right. Know. Just get our start normally we stop ten minutes early. Yeah. <laughs> start, 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 yeah, drinking. start start drinking. Yeah, no. Um, <laughs> I, I I I confess I watched MSNBC last night and they actually had a countdown clock. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so um, yeah, I'm. I think. Does anybody object to that? I think that's valid on this historic day. All right, so it's that's just done. stopping 20 minutes early. That's all. Yeah, all right. So that's uh, just going to put a yes there. Chaos DNI self reflection. 
Is, how, is that the, what we just discussed, the how to capture work and how to present the work, or are these? No, separate? so this is, okay, so I'd like to talk through this just a tiny, tiny bit. So um, we have a, okay, so we have a, we have a grant from the Ford Foundation to do a self-reflection on the chaos project with respect to DNI. Basically, how are we doing as a project yeah. with respect to DNI? Um, this is across the entirety of the project. And the the support is essentially to be able to hire people externally, not like a huge amount of money, but to pay people externally to, to really do that process so that it's not somebody internal to the chaos community doing that reflection. So that we have, you know, kind of these neutral people doing this reflection. And so um, one is, you know, what is the message that we want to send to the folks? Maybe one is, and we don't have to talk about it here because we're recording, but who might those people be is one question. So who might those people be that would really provide um, an, uh, the skills to, to do a reflection on the chaos project from a DNI perspective? Um, and then second, you know, what is, what are we hoping to accomplish with that reflection? And then three, um, how do we, how do we capture the process by which that reflection occurred so that other communities could do it themselves without necessarily having to hire people? You know what I mean? So like if mm -hmm. like OpenStack wanted to do a self-reflection, I, I know you, you, you do, <laughs> OpenStack does, but maybe that wasn't the, great, the best example, but if other communities wanted to do a self-reflection on DNI, like what are the guidelines that we could provide to them that would help them do that over the course of, you know, three months or six yeah. months, whatever the time frame might be. Yeah. Like so I one learned, is I learned to do yeah. something. It took me a really long time, but now I can boil it down to these twelve things or whatever. Yeah, exactly. Here's a series of steps that could help your community um, do a self-reflection. Yeah. So the question is really the question and, and maybe people have thoughts on, on how, you know, identifying these people and what's the, what's the part of that outreach that we want to, to say to the external folks in terms of what we're looking to accomplish in this self-reflection, you know, kind of what, what the ask is, I guess, to participate in this. Um, and then how we set up the chaos project to capture the work that they're doing and then capture this this final document that other people could could use to self reflect. Does that make sense? Yeah. So I'm, I'm so it's basically look. You're looking for for suggestions about how we identify outside advisors, um, how we reach out to them, and then in the in that context, how we frame what our goals are, which emerge as in a very broad sense as chaos is experimenting with the self-reflection and how to do that process with external advisors. Um, and obviously we want to do it in a way that is uh, helps the community move forward, doesn't turn the community into a battlefield of weirdness, right? right. And then how, how can we capture that process so that others yeah. can, can kind of do something similar in the future without having to pay for advisors? And we have right. the luxury to kind of. Okay, that's on page two of the notes. Just see it if you're not following down there. So capture. So others can do something similar without having to engage outside advisors. So do people have thoughts on, on maybe what the that first point, what the ask would be. So this is under, you know, basically how framing what our goals are when asking for the involvement. Yep, I was adding Sam, like first we jot down what our exact goals are, that'll enable us to draft accordingly. So, so could you repeat that, Vinod, my audio? Yeah, this so, I'm saying like first we jot down what our exact goals are so that will help us to drop the yeah. uh, request accordingly. 
Mm-hmm. Right. So maybe we maybe we create a doc for the goals for that diversity survey. So what you know, Matt's writing down some goals that sort of help to conceptualize what we're doing. Um, and one is just to sort of, you know, we've done a lot of work in DNI inside the working group. And part of it is, you know, taking some of the metrics and ideas that have, this group has generated and sort of looking outward to the rest of the chaos project and trying to apply what, what we've laid down for our, for the world to ourselves. And, and to do that, we, our perspective is because we've been thinking about it for so long, having outside advisors um, that Ford's helping us pay uh, helps to ensure that we have perspective on the work that we're doing. And then, so when we're asking for people's involvement, I think that that string of words is part of it. I think we need to find people that are as external as possible. Um, there are a lot of diversity focused governing bodies out there that I think we could either ask for help or talk to people in those bodies. Like, I won't throw out names, but there's a lot of groups that are focused on diversity that do specifically this kind of thing. I think they would love to, um, I think there are at least a couple of them who would love to get paid to do that, <laughs> basically. Um, but uh, I, I just I just think that we have a lot of options and we I think the biggest, the hardest part will be narrowing them down. Amy had also made a point in the comment about an internal person as well. Do you want to talk about that, Amy? I can hold yeah. on. I mean, yeah, I had to find the button. Um, so I know we're talking here, chaos is self-reflection primarily, but a lot of groups do use internal. Um, so I think it's important to realize that in some cases it's going to be both. Um, in this case, you know, yeah, we've been, we've got a grant to go out and get people. And you could, and if I think I know who Matt was referring to, Biturgia, um, you know, they do cross the line between being external and internal. So we do need to be cognizant of that. I mean, technically we're hiring an outside company who is involved in what we do. So, or an outside group of people like it could be just like one person from california one person from florida you know? right people who aren't necessarily in the you know the community itself but work for a company that is you know so i don't think there's an issue with it being a crossover to some internal people um but that would also depend on the grant itself it doesn't specify. Okay. No. No. So and in would, fact, yep, go ahead. I'm sorry. Yeah, I would definitely not exclude the ability for some internal people to be involved. And I think if we made mention that it could be internal or external people, I think that covers all our bases. Okay. For, from a, uh, go ahead. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Oh, sorry. Kind of building on that a little bit, you know, we are, we are in the metrics business. Uh, and from an internal perspective, it would be very easy for us to take our metrics and, and point them at our community and build a report that way. Uh, and I, I think we could probably do that in a fairly uh, 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 non-biased way uh, if we're just pointing our existing metrics at the community. Uh, and then as far as the interpretation of those metrics go, uh, that we leave that to the external group. And I'll add to that, like having an internal will bring a bridge between external. If they might miss something, internal will help to facilitate that in that discussion. I really think the internal aspect of it should be as limited as possible. Uh, I'd like to push this because uh, we are the people that have the most bias about organization as well, uh, though we do have the most information. Uh, I think internal people could be used as either a liaison or an information provider. 
but the, I don't think they should be making any decisions. That's just, I guess that's just my opinion on that, but I get stuck decisions? on that. Yeah, I don't I'm, think it I'm would curious. be just, yeah, yeah I, my, my, my thought is like the reflection, like just kind of a response as to how you're doing. And here's a potential way to, to kind of address any concerns, but I don't think it's quite decisions. Amy, I'm sorry. Yeah, I mean, the recommendations, I don't consider those decisions, but that's just me. I, I guess I would reword it like, yeah, they if, are. If I, you mean, ask, I, think that's I mean, go ahead, Matt. Uh, I was just saying, if you asked me how the project's doing, I'm going to say it's doing great because I like the project. That, that's all I'm saying. And I think we, I think what we're probably responding is that we'd like to draw out a narrative that's more descriptive than the project's doing great. And I think that that conversation, you know, we can always do better. We just have no idea what we can do better at yet. And yeah, I when think you get the metrics back, sometimes you're surprised by what you get. So I think no matter what we will as long as the right metrics are asked, we will get an eye-opening experience one way or the other that, hey, yeah, we really are doing good or, oh my God, I didn't know someone thought that way. I mean, that's what happened in OpenStack. There were some really bad comments and there's a chance that they weren't actually from people within the community, but you know, it definitely gave me focus to make sure that that wasn't the general feeling. And I know it's not, but whether they were truly community members or not. I mean, the comments weren't nice. Matt saw them because I had him under NDA. And I, I'd like to hope that they weren't people within the community. But you never know. Doing the divisive language stuff has really shown, you know, people's true nature. I'd like, you know, anonymously or not anonymously. But, you know, when you go through endeavors like that, you really get to see something you wouldn't normally see. Yeah, I would, I would just, oh, go ahead. No, you go ahead. I was going to say, I would just add that um, I think the benefit of having an external person join is that we, um, hopefully some metrics that we haven't thought of yet will rise to the surface. So I think that's mm -hmm. also part of it. Um, just wanted to point that out that um, I think it will also benefit us in the metrics side of things to have other things to measure that we're not measuring currently. Yeah. I I think that's valid. And I would I would think that from a liaison perspective, the the folks who whomever they might be, I mean that they would participate probably either in the community call or in the DNI meeting. So I think there's enough of us that can help provide kind of liaison roles with the chaos community because there is something to be said. And I think this was Vinod's point that right, you bring somebody totally external. To the chaos project they don't really know the bearings of the project they don't really like somebody has to help <laughs> a little bit yeah. in the translation about what chaos is and who we all are and all that kind of stuff and i think we can do that in the either the dni working group or the community call so i, I think um this may be implied but it, you know it, it's um How's CAST doing? Building a roadmap, using our own metrics. There's this, I think, implied goal, and maybe it doesn't need to be stated, of a reflexive process that we will also ultimately harden the diversity and inclusion metrics that we've developed to date by applying them to ourselves. Because we'll learn what, you know, geez, that sounded like a great way of measuring something on paper, but when we go to do it, it has this practical obstacle or doesn't answer the questions that we thought it would answer or fails to show us a full picture. I mean, there, I mean, we're going to find shortcomings whenever it's like writing code in a sense, you know, when I run it, um, I figure out what I, what, what I can make better or more efficient or more accurate. Um, and I think it's reflexivity is the word that comes to mind. I don't know if that's a goal or if that's just implied. I tried to capture some of that. I okay. think we have four goals there, which is yeah. use our own metrics and potentially identify new metrics. Mm -hmm. um, 
use those metrics to really ask how chaos is doing in this regard. Um, build a roadmap for chaos. This is kind of to Amy's point, right? Like certain things are going to be highlighted, whether positive or negative, um, and things that we might think about going forward, and then help articulate the process so that other others can do the same. Does this seem okay? Uh, yeah. These are more process oriented, like how does this focus on DNI aspect? Is just the process is going to identify the DNI aspect or do we have a specific goal so, related to DNI aspect? So it's a DNI aspect across the scope of the project. We're just recognizing that we have a DNI group who's really focused on it. Obviously we have some knowledge ourselves and some things that we've done that we can use as a lens for looking at the whole of chaos, I think. Matt, tell me if I've, I've like wildly misinterpreted the goal, the idea here. Oh, I, I think this is spot on. So I don't know if this helps Vinod with answering your yeah. question. Well, my was like, uh, if I look at these uh, all four goals, how these goals are going to answer me that how diverse or how inclusive our community is. That's goal number two. Yeah. Yeah. I just I was just typing quickly. <laughs> okay. Now now this is helpful. Okay. For for goal uh, for goal number four. I would really, I would love to see some, a survey tool maybe come out of that. Uh, and maybe uh, maybe another community report initiative that uh, others could use. Those two yeah, I, I think that would be great. I wouldn't put that in as a goal because I would kind of leave that to the folks, whomever they might be. Like a survey might be what they recommend. I don't know. I mean, do you want to put that in there, Kevin? Uh, I mean, I, I kind of think I, I kind of think that's how we we get at some of this this data. And if if it's a mix of internal and external, I think I I think those are things we should be thinking about in in getting here. So what chaos metrics can we apply uh, to this yes. process? What what chaos metrics can we recommend? How can we grab them? How can we uh, how can we make this process available to people in the future? I think that's something that we have to think all the way through goal one, two, three, and four. Uh, and I think insight from the chaos community is going to be really important for that. Uh, one, because it's the, as I said earlier, we're in the, we're in the business of metrics. And then, and two, because the, it matches so well with our uh, initiatives, the, the, you know, providing tooling and reports for, for other projects. So it doesn't cool. necessarily need to be in goal four, but I think it's it's kind of an overarching thing that we should be thinking about. And I think that's fair. I mean, I think that's part of what the deliverable would be at the end. And an initiative might very well be it. All right, cool. Well, we have uh, 15 seconds left on our- Well, I just wanted to go to the last <laughs> bullet point. If you click okay. that link. Uh, the GitHub chaos translations. translations. Yes, clicking. Um, actually, I'm not sharing. Is someone else sharing? I can. Um, I can share as well. I just uh, sure. did not. So think here. basically, I just I have the translations, the Chinese and Spanish translations yeah. for all of our metrics. Yeah, and so I think uh, it's sort of a mix of Cantonese and other dialects. I'm just kidding. I have no idea. I was going to say, how do you know that? <laughs> <laughs> uh, what I recall, we so, were supposed to have the PDF of the uh, PDF of all these translations, but these are uh, MD files. I understand. So, but the PDF can be built from these markdown files now. Right. Okay. So that's so. I just had to get the markdowns in there. I had shared them with Kevin. Oh, so, so, 
uh, sorry uh, to interrupt, uh, but uh, what I was uh, like last time discussed with Kevin was like when we switch to a new platform for the website, these MD will be helpful, like having a direct uh, Chinese version of that uh, rather than a PDF. Tell me what you mean. Uh, so, you mean the so markdown you, being in Chinese is is advantageous? Yes, because that's what we have, you, uh, right? Yes, and when we pull the record from the markdown, it'll directly show in the Chinese rather than having a conversion done or opening a PDF file. Direct at the website can directly show in the Chinese version or a Spanish version. Having markdown will be helpful, I guess. Kevin can add to that. Maybe. Uh, yes, that is true. That's uh, having having the markdown translated is a good thing, and it'll it'll help us in the future as we as we make more and more moves to translate parts of the website uh, to uh, for the for the PDF release that we were talking about. That is gonna that'll occur in March, uh, and that's basically we'll we'll release a PDF version of the uh, English. Uh, metrics release, the Chinese metrics release, and the Spanish metrics release, and that'll it'll be a long PDF document uh, that basically incorporates all of the uh, metrics that have been released uh, to date. I did also want to mention before we close up that the, there are some broken images in the at least the Chinese version. Uh, I'll provide a link for example, but um, so to to that end, then so the idea here is that these are like we can work in this translations repo now. Mm -hmm. So Matt, if you see a broken image, but, yeah, you have the power to fix you it. You have the power to fix it now. Oh, so I didn't can... want to hear that. I've got the power. <laughs> All right, we're two oh. minutes, we're three minutes over of our goal. I'm just gonna point I that just out. wanted to, say, this is where the translation work will occur. As we have new metrics that come out, I'll simply have them translated in full and add them to this repo. As we have minor changes, we're going to have to encourage the working groups to to put their issues in here. Okay. So you know what I mean. So like if yeah. evolution has a minor change, you can take care of it in your own repo, but right. then you'll also have to post an issue or cross post the issue that says because of this minor change, we also need that minor change reflected in the Chinese and the Spanish versions. That seems we reasonable. may we may have to think about some sort of uh, yearly or bi yearly audit. Where we just kind of take a peek and make sure that everything is still uh, uh, copacetic. Yeah, that makes total sense. Is there an, a volunteer that wants to facilitate the next meeting, or I'm happy to do it another time since I was tragically cut short by the election of a legitimate president. Um, I can take care of it next week. All right, that's great. Thank you, Matt. I'm going to put you down as facilitator, Matt Snell. Um, I've added a few things that I'm sure we'll come back to next week and put some placeholder ones and twos in the attendees for the 27th. And I think this would, unless anyone else has anything they need to add, uh, this would conclude this diversity and inclusion meeting on January 20th, uh, 2021, the inauguration of our 46th president and first female vice president. Very exciting. Great, everybody. It's good to all see right. you all. You're all. Bye, Thanks, all. Everyone. Bye, everyone. Bye.